Hello, my name is Alan Hicken and I work for Central Christian on a casual basis. I also work at Skegness at the main spring harvest event. This morning's reading is from Acts chapter 5, verses 12 to 25 and verses 38 and 39. The apostles heal many. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared to join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. The apostles persecuted. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go, stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel and sent for, to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, we found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. Then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Well, good morning, everyone. It's amazing that you've joined us today. We're Gavin and Anne Calver, um, and it's just our privilege to bring you some of the teaching of the material on Unleashed the Acts Church today. Um, just before we dig in, um, we just want to recommend two books really highly yeah. to you today. The first one is Letters to the Church by Francis Chan. Um, these are both books that we've read um, in preparation to write our book and we were so deeply inspired by Francis Chan's Letters to the Church. He, he has himself tried to live what he felt the Holy Spirit was saying to the church. So he's gone out on a limb. He left his massive church in the States for Asia. He came back to the States, did something new. I think he's back in Asia, but he's just got this amazing journey um, of his walk with the church and trying to live out the Acts Church, really. So we really recommend that. The second one is Alan Scott's Scattered Servants, Unleashing the Church to bring life to the church. And Alan Scott, um, very much filled with the Holy Spirit, a really spirit-empowered in, in, story and narrative. Again, talking about how his church was transformed by a work of God. Um, both books, especially if you're in the church, if you're a church leader, these books would really um, speak to you. Yeah, Spring Harvest website, we'll have the links. Uh, the links should come on the screen now. Get hold of them. Brilliant, should we pray? That's, then, a good, that's always a great always way to a good thing. Um, always a good thing. So let's pray. And Lord, we just still our hearts before your throne this morning. And we just worship you, the King of Kings. 
and we thank you for our lives, we thank you for our families, we thank you for our friends, and we thank you that you're Lord over everything. And Father, as we begin today to look at being unleashed again, Father, we pray that you would speak individually to us and corporately to us wherever we are. Come Holy Spirit, we pray in your name. Amen. 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 We had fun yesterday, didn't we? We did have fun. Yeah, looking at Acts 2 and Acts 4, and a bit of the power, but also the togetherness. A bit of the power. And today we've had read for us Acts 5. What are we looking at today? So today is Unleashed Presence. Can you say that? Unleashed Presence. Uh, unleashed Presence. <laughs> so we've talked about um, being unleashed in power. Um, we've talked about being unleashed people together. And today we're looking at Unleashed Presence. Yeah, and this is from Acts 5, uh, and I love this passage. Mm -hmm. I love this passage. I love this passage as well because, you know me, I love to say, what does the Bible look like? Yeah. You know, let's have a go. T t tell us about part of the Bible. What, what does it look like? And you, you, you think about that. What, for you, what passage do you think, that says that, but what would that have looked like? Yeah, I think it's when the woman in John, you know, she takes the perfume, the, mm. the pure nard, and, and just pours it all over Jesus' feet and washes his feet with her hair. That, that to me, is just this everything, just giving everything of herself to Jesus. That's just amazing. Yeah, what would that have looked like? Mm. Yeah. I've got a similar one from John, actually. Mm. Well, not similar, but the same book. Mm -hmm. When Jesus is resurrected from the dead, something we've all just celebrated, what's the first thing he does in John? Folds up dirty washing. Oh, yeah. He's buried in two sheets. He was resurrected from the dead. He folds one up. Clearly Mary raised him well. Then at some point he thinks, hang on, I'm the saviour of the world and leaves one of the sheets behind unfolded and cracks on with yeah. uh, sharing his message. There's a few others I like. I, I, I've always been fascinated by Lot's wife turning to a pillar of salt. Yeah, that was... Why salt and not, not pepper? I've always been fascinated by the feeling of 5,000. Little boy's lunch feeds a whole field. You know, and yet the little boy didn't want the lunch. It was so rubbish. He looked at the barley loaves and the smelly fish and gave it to Jesus. So there's others as well. Are there any, any yeah. others in the Bible for you? There's lots, Gav, but I, um, I'm thinking that you want to tell us what this looks like. Well, yeah, to some extent. Yeah, I mean, in, in this passage, you've got this incredible moment mm. where the apostles are preaching mm -hmm. and they're all banged up for preaching. Previously, a couple of them have been banged up for preaching, but now just about all of them are rounded up and banged up for preaching. Then what happens is, the angel of the Lord comes during the night. There's two guards. Now, now for a start, I feel sorry for the guards because these apostles just can't help preaching. So they're thinking captive audience. Those poor guards would have got preached out all night. Mm -hmm. Then the, the spirit of the Lord comes along. The angel of the Lord comes along, sorry, in the night. Yeah. Goes past the guards, opens the door to the prison, lets the apostles out, yeah. locks the door up again. And it says to the apostles, all right, fellas, crack on, more preaching. That's it. I mean, how would you feel about that? You've been banged up for preaching, you get let out, how would you feel? Yeah, I just think absolutely amazed, absolutely amazed that an angel of the Lord would come to me in a prison and, and lead me out. Like, just wow, the power of God. Yeah, I know you like that bit, right? But hang on, bear with me, you're a preacher. Then the angel says, preach more. Exactly what you've been put in prison that I'm miraculously letting you out for. Yes. Go and do it again. How do you feel then? I don't know. I think you'd be so overwhelmed by the power of God that you would just go and get on with it, wouldn't you? <laughs> I think I think. I've been let out legged. But no, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. I don't know if you would. Then, the some, then what happens is the Sanhedrin gather. Mm. Now the Sanhedrin's the Jewish council. These guys are proper loaded, proper clever, yeah. and proper smartly dressed. Mm -hmm. Now, I think they've got brains like the solar system. They're incredibly clever. I've grown up in a family of geniuses, if I'm honest. My, my old man's really clever. My siblings are really clever. I didn't get the brains. I've got the looks. But growing up with young geniuses, you realise that if someone's really clever, they've often got very little common sense. Mm -hmm. Like my old man can solve any theory known to mankind, but he can't put a picture on the wall. <laughs> and so into that context, I start thinking of the Sanhedrin like this. The Sanhedrin have got mega brains, but no common sense. So I think of them sat in a circle, dressed really smart, with their brains just there. They send a messenger to get the apostles. The messenger comes back and says, they're not there. So the Sanhedrin say, well, was the door open? Yes. No. no. Were the bars broken? No. no. Was there any sign of breaking and entering? No. no. Where have the apostles gone? Don't know. No. <laughs> And then I love to think of the Sanhedrin sat there in their circle, their brains are whirling around, they're trying to solve this conundrum yeah. until someone finally looks out the window and says, surprise, they're out there. Yeah. What are they doing? 
what you banged them up for. You know, this is an incredibly visual story. So you've got everything from the proclamation of the gospel to the arrest, to the imprisonment, to the miraculous delivery from imprisonment by an angel, mm -hmm. to the Sanhedrin sending for them and them not being there, to the Sanhedrin trying to solve it, to them looking out the window and then seeing them preaching the gospel in the courtyard. This is an unbelievable piece of scripture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, th I think what we really want to highlight from the passage today, um, and if you take anything from it, um, it's this really, it is the presence, the power of God mm. um, at work. And, and that's just what, what you're flabbergasted mm. with by just hearing it again, is just the unleashed presence. And, and when we, we're going to unpack that, but, but we just want to think of that as words, works and wonders, yeah. you know, throughout Acts. We see the gospel preached. We see the people of God doing amazing things. But then we see this, these signs and these wonders that are just incredible. And, you know, an angel leading them out of the prison. Uh, I mean, this, that's just one wonder in the midst of, of a sea of many, many wonders. Um, but, but often they're there working together. And it's just amazing. It's incredible. And, and you know, let, let's get realistic as well. If this happened in your town, <laughs> you'd be quite stunned, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, the power of God in this is unbelievable. It is. It unbelievable. Is. And I guess that's where we start. Mm -hmm. Our God is all powerful. He is. That's the first thing I think I learned from this. That our God's all powerful. Mm -hmm. you know, literally, there's nothing he cannot do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're both keen runners. We both have Adidas running shoes. Why? There's an outlet near here. And when it comes to running, Adidas have a slogan, and this is it. Impossible is nothing yeah now i'll be honest with you every time you put this body in those shoes that proves to be false marketing there is much <laughs> that is impossible for me when i go running but with god literally nothing's impossible mm -hmm. you know we might have limited god i think sometimes we've tried to make god cute or small mm -hmm. or tame enough that we're happy with him when actually there is nothing god cannot do i mean that really changes mm -hmm. how you look at stuff mm -hmm. uh, some people are good at getting into trouble some people aren't so good at getting into trouble, but the apostles get into trouble because God's doing so much and the authorities don't know what to do. Yeah. Our God is so powerful that he can do so much. And I just wonder for some of us, have we limited God so that we're comfortable with him? Ooh, what do you think? That's really challenging. I mean, just imagine getting into trouble because God is up to something. Imagine that God is using you in such a way that you're in trouble with the authorities. I mean, what does that even look like? Have you been in trouble, Gav, for, for, for preaching, for doing anything for God? <laughs> no, not really. I've been in trouble for other things. <laughs> um, I think there might come a time yeah. in this nation where that could be possible. I can certainly guarantee to anyone, anyone watching and to you as well, mm -hmm. As long as there's air in these lungs, I will not stop preaching that Jesus is not one of many options. He's not a lifestyle choice or a possibility. He's the way, the truth and the life. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, that absolute exclusivity of Christ, oh. we're protected under law to share about. Yeah. But there may be a day when we're not. Yeah. But that doesn't change the fact that the message is still relevant. The difference for these apostles was they were living in a time when the hostility and persecution was on another level, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Another level. But you, do, but you do wonder if we have made Christianity so comfortable and we've therefore made God smaller than he is. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And there's the sense of unleashing is just this awareness that that the power of God is so much greater than, mm. than we've given him credit for, actually, than we've maybe believed for. Mm. Um, and that actually that they're desperately, the authorities are desperately trying to stamp this out. And yet God is so powerful. And and I think, you know, it makes me think some of the, the gospel that we're, we're giving people is a watered down yeah gospel it it's not the fullness like we we may be doing great things for people and we may be preaching on a sunday and and we may be doing stuff but like what about the power like what about the power of god i was just going to share yeah, that do, bit do. um from romans if you want to flick over um to romans chapter 15 it's a beautiful moment when paul actually talks about the full proclamation of the gospel in romans 15 and verse 18 he says this I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, yeah. by the power of signs and miracles through the power of the Spirit. So from Jerusalem all the way around to Illicrum, I have fully proclaimed the gospel 
of Christ. And there's this sense of Paul just saying, I just need you to know, everyone, mm -hmm. that I have said and done this in the power of spirit and words and wonders have followed everything that has come about it hasn't been one without the other and my understanding is that that's a full proclamation of the gospel it's a little bit like what alex yeah alex buchanan a great yeah. older member of spring harvest royalty the late alex buchanan he prophesied over us our wedding uh, which was what 19 years ago or oh, was it longer no, 19 years ago. And he prophesied Long very time. clearly that we needed to preach the full counsel of God mm. and to not just say what would make you popular, but the full counsel. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said something very similar mm. when he warned about the dangers of cheap grace. He said the biggest danger to the church is making the gospel what people want to hear so they'll say yes to it. And, you know, the gospel is our, it's our words, it's our works, it's the wonders. It's our unity as well, as we looked at yesterday. And we need to make sure that actually uh, we're not making the bar so low but we're being realistic about what does it mean to follow Jesus? Mm -hmm. I, it's my belief that when Jesus calls you to follow him, he calls you not, not just to come and live, but to come and die, to die to self, to follow him, yeah. to take up your cross, deny yourself. That's a huge cost, but it's well worth making. Yeah. And what's so challenging about a passage like this is the disciples will, the apostles will readily give up their freedom mm -hmm. in order to share this with someone else. That's how vital it is. We, we've heard stories of people around the world put in prison, losing their lives, all kinds of things mm -hmm. to share this message. Mm -hmm. Yet for some of us, we struggle to share with our neighbour. Yeah, and I think it goes back to what you were saying about being comfortable, you know, that we, we've put the gospel in a little box with a lid on and shut the lid and gone, that's the gospel as we understand it. And actually, I, I think in this season, God's going, I just want you to, I want to blow the lid off what your understanding is of, of what I'm capable mm -hmm. of. And I want to display my power. Will you give me room to display my power? So you, you're going to preach about that, but are you going to pray for that person to be healed? Are you going to begin to step out and move in the in the gifts in the power of God as well as talking about what what he's able to do demonstrating what he's he's able to do you know there's that old saying isn't there word without the spirit mm. and will dry up but spirit without the word and we will blow up but if we have both we will grow up yeah, and I good. think and, and the, it's not one without the other we need the fullness of the gospel um, between us all together, moving in the fullness and, and pushing out of our comfort zones. You know, they were pushed right out into the temple courts to preach the word mm. of God um, because of the wonders of God and what and what he's done. And I, I'm just challenged before we move on, Gav, just, you know, that old um, John Wimber quote, he used to say um, that if 95% or if the Holy Spirit was removed from your church, 95% of ministry would continue mm. and and i think you know my god is all powerful do i see that power at work mm. in every aspect of what we're doing as a church how much of our ministry would just carry on mm. and we would just be unaware if the spirit was involved or not yeah and i, and I think that probably is easier to see in the pre-coronavirus day yes i do because everything it feels like everything's changed even though it's not been that long mm -hmm. And you wonder going forward whether without a dependency on the spirit, anything's possible. Mm -hmm. The likelihood in this nation is it's going to be quite a lot of economic pain and struggle going forward. And that will often affect the most vulnerable. And into those spaces, we have to be dependent on the spirit or how do we survive? Um, but I think it's a real challenge. I also think another thing we need to sort of put into yesterday's box and not do anymore is this constant discussion about words and works as well. Yes. You know, about, you know, because some people are really good at works and some are really good at words and what's this and what's this. Actually, you know, words and works are both part of the gospel. It's our intentionality that matters. Or what, are we, what are we going for? What are we wanting? And let's not have a battle between social action and evangelism. Let's actually see the fact that words and works go together in declaring your faith. You paint someone's fence to tell them about Jesus, so you tell someone about Jesus, then you paint their fence. Yeah. And then the wonders piece mustn't be lost too. Yeah, but there's this, these three W's almost. I wonder for some of us, maybe at home, we need to actually put those three W's on a piece of paper and think in our own lives, which are we best at? Which are we struggling with? Where do we need to grow? But I mustn't get too far ahead of ourselves. We don't want to get into yes but how territory just yet. Yeah, no, it's good though. And I just, I think what I'm struck by as well is, you know, there's this word, go and stand in the temple courts. And they, and they go, they just go into yeah. the temple courts. Like there's, there's something there about them taking the message, like it's urgent and it's now. Right. And yeah, what? well, they're compelled, aren't mm -hmm. they? Now they're compelled by spirit to go. Mm -hmm. and, and this is, I'd love to be in that sort of space. 
Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I, I right. do go to all kinds of places and do some fairly dangerous things for Jesus. But <laughs> to be compelled to go, you know, all of a sudden, once we were free and social isolating laws were passed, we were suddenly compelled to go to the shopping centre and speak to X person or yeah. Y person or, or compelled to do this or compelled to do that. The idea that, that we would be so malleable right. in God's hands, right. that he could compel us and we therefore had no choice. Mm-hmm. But I think what it does show as well is all of us have a part to play in sharing. Yeah. You know, there's been a couple of things we've done in the church that aren't always helpful. We've made evangelism a sort of personality type. Yeah. You know, a larger than life in your face, big character. I can't imagine the type. <laughs> or we go even further, we've made it a profession. Mm-hmm. So people will say, are you looking forward to some time off work? And what they mean is, are you going to, oh, am I going to stop talking about Jesus or am I going to have time off email? I want time off the email, but you don't take time off sharing. All of us have to share in some way. And I think we need to get better at celebrating every step on the journey. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes six or seven people for someone to make it in faith. So you might be someone on that journey, someone post-decision, pre-decision. We don't want decisions, we want disciples. We've all got to be empowered to play our part. We're all witnesses. My friend Mark Greenwood from Elam talks about, um, when it comes to the gospel, offering people the chance for a big yes, which is your classic yes, I'm in. Mm. A little yes, which is I'm probably in. And a healthy maybe, which is I haven't ruled it out yet. And some of us operate differently in those different spaces. Mm. We're, we're, we're better at dealing with big yeses or healthy maybes or whatever. But the whole church needs to be released in the whole way to reach everyone. Mm-hmm. It's a bit like if you put grains of sand under a microscope, they all look completely different, but from a distance they all look the same. It's a bit like people, it's going to take all people to reach all people. Because mm. I'll let you into a secret. Um, you'll be surprised to hear this, Anne. I can be a bit much for some people. I can, I can be a bit much. A bit too energetic, a bit too in your face, a bit too optimistic, a bit too whatever. And actually, I will only reach some people. You'll reach other people. You'll reach more people. Yeah. This, we're, all of us together can make a difference. Yeah. And actually, I believe firmly that all of us are compelled to share. I think it was Spurgeon who said every Christian is either a witness or an imposter. And we mustn't be imposters. Yeah. I think what strikes me as well is, is that we mustn't use our character as a hiding place either. Mm. That we mustn't hide behind, oh, I'm I'm too shy to, to share that, or I'm this and I'm that, I'm too afraid, mm. so I can't do that. You know, I think the apostles show us such a boldness. They demonstrate such an incredible boldness in sharing the gospel. And actually, they're so, I think it comes from this reality that they're so aware of how powerful their God is. They're so, they have such a fear of the Lord, such an awareness yeah. of his might and his power that they're like, I'd rather please him than please the people. And, and I'll actually, I want to serve him and live for him and bow the knee to him and bring whatever I possibly can um, to see his kingdom come and and the belief that the holy spirit will anoint what's what's in our hands to bring about something Mm. greater you know and i think actually they're just ordinary men in this passage they're worse they're unschooled they're 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 less educated than than our 13 year old daughter (laughs) yeah but with the power of god's hand on them look what look what happens but i think you you raise something very interesting though Mm. Um, the fear of the lord piece is really important yeah. I remember um, one of my heroes, Rick Warren, seeing him on the Oprah Winfrey show. And he was being asked, it was a clip, I'm not a regular Oprah watcher. And it was a clip. <laughs> and basically he was being criticised for not, um, let's say, baptising his culture, for not accepting some of the morals of the culture and not just going with the flow, for making himself unpopular by standing against things. Yeah. And, and she asked him, well, why? Why won't you just be more, let's say, inclusive or whatever the word was? Oof, yeah. And he said to Oprah Winfrey, he said, um, the thing is, Oprah, he says, I'm more afraid of God than I am of man. Mm. And it blew me away at the time, because actually, how often are we more keen to be loved and liked by our fellow human than any fear of the Lord plays any kind of part? Yeah. Now, fear of the Lord being the first refrain of wisdom is something we've maybe lost somewhere. Yeah. And you wonder if for these early disciples, that there's, it's maybe fear, fear might be an unhelpful word for you, but their reverence for God is such that they can't help but let that pour out all around them. Yeah, they're just, they're living out of a, a different space, aren't they? They're living with a different worldview. And it's like, I think God is wanting to shift our thinking, shift our minds mm. into a space of believing in him, that he is greater and that he is more powerful. And that actually um, Christianity will never be swept away. It can't, it can't yeah. be 
swept away. Which is incredible, mm-hmm. isn't it? When you think back to the uh, some of the early disciples dipped in pitch and used as human candles in Nero's garden yeah. through to the so-called Islamic state of today. Yeah. People have felt the way to get rid of Christians is to hurt them, to kill them. Mm. But the thing is, is Christianity won't be swept away. We know the end of the story. However many good things happen in between now and the end of time, um, however many World Cups England win, however many healings there are, however many revivals there are, mm. however many bad things happen, however many coronaviruses there are, however much persecution or difficulty, the end of the story, whether you look at the good or the bad things ahead, the end of the story is the same. Jesus wins. And we've got to start living in that confidence a bit more. Our faith can't be swept away. And in fact, if anyone wants to help the church grow, start persecuting it. When you put it under pressure, it explodes. When you leave it alone, it it seems to not grow in the same way. There's something about Christianity, it won't be swept away. Therefore, we must place a greater confidence in Jesus. It doesn't mean we shouldn't have to have fears to deal with, because let's be honest, we're all afraid. Mm -hmm. But courage is not the absence of fear. It's the management of the fear. Mm. I mean, I personally feel really challenged by that because I, you know, I have journeyed with fear for a lot of my life and it, it's, I think it's choosing faith over fear, isn't it? It's going, okay, I, I really don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to step into the temple court anyway. Um, and I'm going to step out and believe my God will come through anyway, um, because he is all powerful because Christianity through our lifetime, through the generations before us, has not been stamped out. It has not been swept away. And I love that bit, you know, we haven't read it this morning, but Gamaliel, the teacher of the law, he stands up towards the end of the chapter, towards the end of chapter five. And he says to them, you know what, in this present case, I advise you brothers, leave these men alone. Let them go, because if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it's from God, you will not be able to stop these Come men. On. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Yeah. And God is on our side. And I think what he wants us to realize is his spirit lives and reigns in us. He is on our side. He is with us. And therefore he fights for us. Mm. If we're fighting for his agenda, mm. we know we can know that he's fighting with us, in us and through us. And I think that's some of what I get from from this passage, Gav. Mm, that's really great. It's really mm. great. And you were telling me the other day <laughs> about something you'd seen in Band of Brothers. Tell us about that. Because that's quite... Because I think we're fools if we think we're not all scared. Yeah. But there comes a point at which we can make choices that help us overcome our fears and keep going. I think we, we hold on to our lives so much, don't we? We hold on to our comfort. We hold on to what we understand as our worldview. And that's all being shaken at the moment, isn't it? With people's health being mm. really bad, with the way we're having to live right now. Um, but yeah, it was my friend, Steve, our friend Steve, mm. Steve Upple had said to me, and look at this clip in um, Band of Brothers. It's really powerful. I'm sure many of you have watched Band of Brothers. But there's this moment where Officer Blythe, he comes to his lieutenant and he confesses to his lieutenant that he's been in a ditch and he's stayed in this ditch by himself because he's been too afraid to move back on to the battle line to fight. He's too afraid. And and the lieutenant says something really interesting to Blythe. He he turns to him and he says, you know, we're all scared, Blythe. Mm. We're all scared, Blythe. The only hope that you have is to accept the fact that you are already dead. And the sooner that you accept that, the sooner you will be able to function as a soldier is supposed to function. All war depends on it. Yeah, yeah. It kind of fits with... Whoever wants to follow me should take up their cross, deny himself and follow me, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That you sort of die to self, live for Christ. Mm -hmm. And that kind of is what this this whole chapter is about. Mm -hmm. It's about then stepping out and knowing that our God's all powerful and he's with us. Mm -hmm. About knowing that Christianity can't be swept away so we can be confident in knowing the end of the story. And in being compelled to share and stepping into that. But it is scary. Mm -hmm. It is scary. It's like when Peter got out of the boat to walk on the water. Lots of people are knocking for that. But you know what? Fair play, Peter. You got out of the boat. The others didn't. You had the courage to make a step. I remember a couple of years ago, I was preaching, maybe three years ago now, Mm -hmm. we were preaching at a conference and it was one particular meeting that neither of us were speaking in. It was our friend Malcolm Duncan, who's on next. Do hang around for him too. He he was preaching on me being different in our culture and call people forward if they wanted to stand out in culture. I don't often respond to talks, I'm usually giving them. Strikes me as the height of preaching arrogance to give a talk and respond to my own message. But on this occasion, I went forward and um, as I stood at the front, I felt God say to me, "Um, 
You need to be braver in this next chapter. And I looked around this tent, there about 6,000 people, and I've got to be honest, I thought, doing all right compared to a lot of these, Jesus. <laughs> and I felt God tell me off, don't look sideways, Harrison. look upwards. Yeah. yeah, there we go, we talked about yesterday. Don't look sideways, look upwards. Yeah. You need to be braver in this next season. And I stood there at the front of this tent, and I just wept and wept and wept. Not because I'm not prepared to be brave, but it's hard, isn't it? It's difficult to be brave. Came away from there thinking, okay, I'll be braver. A few weeks later, it was the last night of the school holidays and we were praying as a family. And what we often do after praying is sit and wait and see if God wants to say anything. After a few minutes, my daughter, Amelie, who knew nothing of this, said, Daddy, this is a bit weird, but I think Jesus wants you to be braver. You know, off the back of that, I've had to make various steps to be brave. It ultimately led to me taking over leading the Evangelical Alliance, which is a really brave move, but an important move. And I'll tell you something, it's not that I'm never scared, but it's that you have a choice. Does the fear stop you? Or do you find the courage and the bravery with Jesus to keep going and to minister in words, works and wonders? Yeah, and it strikes me that, you know, there the apostles are that in the midst of persecution. They're in the midst of um, fear. They're in the midst of, you know, I might lose my life today. Um, and actually, we're not in that, but we are in a state of fear as a nation. Right now, fear is hanging like a blanket. And the enemy wants us to be controlled and limited and driven by that fear. Um, but I really believe the Lord is just saying, my children, I want you to push it back yeah, come on. And, and drive it back and just declare in Jesus' name, be gone to the fear and to step out in faith. And almost like just by stepping out in faith, we, we push back what the yeah. enemy is trying to push us towards. And, and you know, that, that's true whether we're in the midst of the coronavirus or not. It's a, it's a choice to act in faith, isn't it? For the apostles, they had no idea um, that the angel was going to lead them out of the prison, but they were being obedient in stepping out in faith and in having a go mm. for the king. I mean, I, I remember just, just praying for a friend at the school gate. For me, you know, it's little things in, in certain yeah. moments, but, but I felt the Lord challenge me and don't just pray for them at home, but pray with them when you're with them. And there was a friend of mine, she had back pain at the school gate. And I just felt that little nudge again, you no, know, pray with mm. her. And I, I you know, I, I said, okay, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And I said, can I pray for you? And she said, yeah, no, that's fine. I said, can I pray now? And she said, okay um and she and she let me pray and i said to her, can i put my hand where the pain wow. is you know and you can see her face like what um but actually the next day when i saw her across the playground she she shouted across and she said and my back is better my back is healed and i just pointed skyward and i said give him glory give him glory because it's jesus and i think it's just little steps mm. isn't it that we can make to, to it might not be preaching in the temple courts but it's going okay how can I demonstrate that my faith is, is powerful, and my God is awesome, and that Christianity will not be stamped, stamped out? Yeah, what a great challenge, mm. what a great challenge. Um, let's pray together, shall we? Then we'll take a, a moment before we return with some yes but hows a little bit later. Mm. Lord, we love you, mm. and we are so grateful that you are with us. You are all powerful. Reveal to your children today more of your power, more of who you are, more of the fact we can trust you. We thank you too, Lord, that Christianity will not be swept away. The darkness seems to sometimes be winning, but it will not win. We know the end of the story and we are grateful to you for that. And Lord, we are compelled to share. That means whether we want to or not, we kind of have to. <laughs> but I pray we would do that with a desire to make you known to others. Lord, would we give an account for the hope we have in you? Would we share with our works how we love you? Would we be open to the wonders you might want to do in and through us? And would you use each one of us during this incredibly challenging time in this nation to make you known to others? God bless you. Um, it's been brilliant to be with you. We'll be back with just um, some space just to unpack this um, with some yes but hows and further prayer if you want to join us.
Hi and welcome back. We're Gavin and Anne Calva and are delighted to be with you. And we'd love to now just look at a few of the yes but hows around this Unleashed Presence piece. So if you've got the book, you might want to pick it up. If you've not, you need to buy it. <laughs> but uh, on page 110... Should we just say about that, that at the end of each chapter, so each chapter there's a lot, there's some narrative um, from the Bible, but then at the end of each chapter is this yes but how section so that yeah just to remind people that our heart cry is that actually how do I work this out and to give people a little way that they can work that out it might be you on your own um, and there's a section for groups and also a bit about resources that you can buy to engage further brilliant thank you brilliant thank you and I think the first one I want to look at is on page 110 and just looking at the idea of praying for individuals to come to know Jesus I think the greatest weapon we have in seeing others come to faith is prayer. Mm. I love the old story of D.L. Moody, the great American preacher, who made a list of everyone he wanted to see come to faith. Yeah. And by the time he had 100 people on his list, he decided that was enough to be dealing with. <laughs> and he prayed every day, not just a tick list. He petitioned every day for those 100 people to come to know Jesus. Mm. And you know, by the time Moody died, 96 of them had given their lives to Jesus. Wow. And at his funeral, the last four did as well so challenged yeah. who are you praying for to come to jesus yeah yeah and, and it kind of makes you think doesn't it um as well what we were saying earlier about you know you could be praying for them but have you got any opportunity to pray with them um mm. and to give them that invitation to come to jesus um, because the lord might be well at work in their life and it's just saying and we're just not aware of it but it's giving them opportunity to respond to what the lord's saying I think it might just be helpful, Gav, just to take a moment um, and yeah. just to think about um, who you really want to see come to Jesus. Who are you longing for in your heart to come to Christ? Who are you praying for and petitioning the heavens for? And perhaps you, you've been praying for a really long time for them and you've got a little bit weary about it. Um, but this reality that our God is all powerful mm. Mm. and that he wants to draw every single person into mm. his kingdom. And, and what a season we're in. I, I'm believing for a harvest. Mm. I'm, I'm believing for a big harvest to come in. We, we think that something mm. mighty is going to, massive is going to happen. So God has gone before mm. us. So so we're just thinking, yeah, let's lift those people up before the Lord in prayer right now. Do you, do you want to lead um, us in a prayer? Um, um. <clears throat> Lord, we pray you would show us mm. who it is we need to be petitioning with you or for. Mm. Uh, we pray you'd show us, you'd lay on our hearts, Lord, mm. those that we need to commit to pray that they would come to you. Yeah. That their hearts would be soft, that opportunities would open. Mm -hmm. that the words of our mouths and the works of our hands and the move of your spirit would soften hearts, transform lives and bring many to yourself. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we pray you do it quickly. Yeah. Even now lay a burden on our friends' hearts. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah, and I mean, even now as, as we're praying, you might just want to, um, you know, jot those names down on the, on the live feed below. You, you might want to say them out loud in your lounge or wherever you're sat. And, and just as, as a kind of symbol of saying, okay, God, I, I'm putting these people before your throne right now. These are the people on my heart. And, and Lord, I know that you see them and I'm asking that you reach out your hand to them and, and that you touch their life. And Father, we, we pray just for dreams and visions for them, God. Um, we, we pray, Lord Jesus, that, that you would move in ways that, that we just couldn't even fathom. Um, Father, with, with your power, we pray. Would you lead many people to yourself in this season, we ask. And I'm just aware just of, of us as we're praying that, that there might well be people who are, who are watching right now um, who, who don't know what we're talking about, who, who don't know the gospel, who don't know Jesus. Is that... Mm. Yeah, no, I was about to say the same thing, yeah, so off you go. No, I think it's a, that's the gap moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think if there's anyone watching this who does not know the Lord Jesus, their personal Lord and Saviour, maybe you're watching this because you've been made to or you've been dragged along yeah. by your partner or something Sorry else. about that. And you know what? It's never too late to choose to surrender your life to Jesus. The Lord is desperate for your heart. He is desperate for your devotion. He is desperate to journey with you. He promises to be with you. He promises to 
forgive you of your brokenness and your sins and set you free from all of that, that you could know life in all its fullness. The only way to know life in all its fullness is to know the author of life. Yeah. And so as we've talked today about words, works and wonders, it would be remiss of us not to give an opportunity for anyone watching who may want to give their life to Jesus. And so in a moment, I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you want to surrender your life to Jesus today, I'd encourage you to put your hands out in front of you and repeat the words of this prayer after me. I just have one more thing to add, just, just a sense in my guts as we're, as we're doing that. Just, um, just, just a hardness in your heart, like just a, oh, I've heard this, I've heard this before, like here they go again. Or, or maybe you're sat next to somebody and you're like, that's what they want me to do. And um, I'm not going to do it because they're sat there. And I just, I just really encourage you that, you know, I feel personally just us sat here that the Lord is knocking on the door of your heart and whether you respond right now in prayer or whether you do that in your own space in your own room later tonight that that God is is after you he loves you and he has chosen you as his child and and Gavin and I you know we've been saved for around 20 odd years um each <laughs> and and it's been the best decision that we ever could have made and living for Jesus is is the best life you can live mm, mm. so let's pray shall we Martin will repeat this after me at home. Lord Jesus, I want to surrender my life to you. Lord, I choose to turn my back on what I've been doing before. I'm sorry, Lord, that I've not been living for you till now. But I thank you, Lord, that you take away my brokenness and promise me life in all its fullness. From this day on, I choose to surrender my life to you and follow you. Amen. Lord, we want to pray for every person who's just prayed that. Yeah. We want to pray that you'd protect them, that you would keep the evil one at bay, that you would walk closely with them. We thank you right now. There's a party going on in heaven on. as people surrender their lives to you. Amen. And we just want to pray that going forwards, mm. those decisions would last, that you would walk closely and that decisions become disciples as people learn what it is to be true followers of you. Mm. And for those who've been praying for years for certain people to make decisions, we rejoice with those people at this point, and we rejoice with you, that people who are lost have chosen to come home. Yeah. Amen. 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 You, you know, there's loads more in the yes, but how's we were going to yes. do. Yes. But we're probably out of time. We've talked about praying for our friends. We We've talked know. about reaching others. Greatcommission.co.uk offers you bucket loads of resources for sharing your faith. Fear is a daily journey to try and overcome. But friends, mm. keep going. God bless you. And we'll see you tomorrow.